Hi, it's Mr. Flint. And Ms. Segovia. And today we are going to look at our constant acceleration lab. So what you need to do is go to the Pre-AP Physics Google site and you're going to be downloading some documents. So make sure you click on this six weeks and we're going to be looking at October 1st and 2nd and click to download the files. So these are the files you're going to be downloading. You need to download all of them. Come over to this arrow and then click download and it will download the file to wherever you have specified on your computer. And you're going to download all of these things here. So you're just going to download every single one of these files. You don't view the video, download it. You can view the video later. Download, download. So you've downloaded those things. Okay. So that's all you need. Once you've done that, then you can get out of that. So we don't jam up the server. You've saved them somewhere. Now hopefully you can get them all into one file. Here I have them here on my desktop and they're all here in one file. Um, you've got your logger profiles and you've got three movie files. You don't have to worry about opening up the movie files. You can if you want, but you don't need to right now. What you need to open up is the logger profile where it says constant acceleration one, and you're going to do these sequentially. So start with one, then go to two, then go to three, then go to four. You also have a digital student copy of the hard copy that we're going to pass out to you. So make sure you open up file one, and it takes a second for mine to open up. You can wheel around on the chair if you're bored. Go back and forth. <laughs> so we just kind of wait, let it open. It and takes a while. So it's opening, and there you go. All right, so once you get in here, then you're going to see a couple of graphs set up and a data table and a video. You want to focus in on the video. So click the video, and you're going to make it really big. Then what you're going to do is analyze the motion of this cart. We can click play. So I can click play. You can watch the cart roll by. Wee, there it goes. Okay. Then you can click the reverse button all the way back to the start, play again if you want to, or just go all the way back to the start, let it stop, come back to the start again, okay, hit stop, and reset this thing. So you can kind of play with these controls here. Now, this control goes frame by frame by frame, so if you click this one, it'll just advance it frame by frame by frame forward. This one advances it frame by frame backwards. So let's go back to the beginning. And you're next going to click this crosshair button. So click that crosshair button, brings up crosshairs. And you're going to hover over the cart, and you're going to click on the yellow dot, the very center of the yellow dot, or I actually prefer the very front of the cart and the very tip here, because I can get a little bit better data if I click that. But if you like clicking on the very center of this, cart, then that's fine. And make sure you're doing the upper cart. This one is for the upper cart. We'll do the lower cart in a moment. This one's set up for the upper cart. So we'll click there and notice nothing happened on the upper cart. So we click again. Now, aha, you see it moved just ever so slightly. So we're going to center over that front and I'm just clicking, coming back to the center and clicking again and trying to just be as careful as possible clicking these things and you can even be slightly more careful because I'm just trying to get this done for time's sake. Alright, so you just keep on clicking these things. Alright, so I'm going to pause for a second and finish clicking these things. Okay, so we're almost done here and we're just doing our last couple of points. Alright, so there you've got the first cart all plotted out. And you can see that you get more and more distance as time goes on. So now that that's all plotted, we can come down here, make our video small again, because we don't need it to be big. And then we need to, um, we're eventually going to be analyzing some data. We're just always going to ignore the first two points and the last two points. We want to do a linear fit, but we don't want a straight line, because if we do a straight line, see how it doesn't fit through our dots very well. 
So we actually want a curve fit. So we're going to come up here and click on curve fit. And it'll open up a little dialog box. And we want quadratic. So we click on quadratic, click try fit. And for some reason, it's on the velocity one. Let me see if I can get that back to the. Yeah, click on the top graph. Make sure you click on the top graph. So I had to come back and notice, okay, so here is the top one, and I can try a quadratic fit. So let me go to quadratic, hit try fit. So it was already on quadratic. And I click try fit, and you can see how those dots line up, and you can click OK. Now, again, I don't want those first and last two points, so I'm going to click off of this only highlight the dots that I want, not the first, not the last two, and retry that again. Alright, so it already says quadratic, click try fit, click OK. Now it gives us some data here, and we'll be looking at that in just a moment, and we're going to do the exact same thing here on the velocity one, but now that these are in a line, we're going to do a linear fit, ignoring the first and the last two, click linear fit. Alright, so then we have some data. Now, here we've got this number, 58, as the A, and that's important. And down here we've got the slope of this line, 116. If you'll notice, 58 times 2 is 116. That's not a coincidence. Um, what this is, is it's telling us the acceleration of the cart. Here we're seeing half the acceleration, we'll explain why, in class, and then here we're seeing the full acceleration, 116, um, this is in pixels per second squared. So it's going 116 pixels per second squared across the screen. And that's going to be some of the basic information you need to know. Now, you want to make sure to save this file at this point and then save as. I would rename it if I were you. Um, let me go to where these files are. Okay, open that up. And it says constant acceleration. This was the first one, and then one, and then you could put your names on it. So I'm going to go Flint and Segovia. So it'll not change the original file. Now we've got this one. So if we need to go back and redo for some reason, we still have the original file unmodified that we could reopen up again. But now we have this new one with all the data that we need. So that's how you do this one. So you've got that saved. You can close that. And then we're going to go on to the second one and open up the second one. And you'll see it looks very similar, except this time, instead of doing the top cart, we're going to be able to go down and we're going to do analyze the bottom cart. And that will be um, the first couple of files that we look at. Then we're going to do the next two files three and four. All right, so make that big again. You know to click on the crosshairs and you're going to continue doing the same thing. It's like rinse and repeat. It's like shampooing your hair. Same thing again. Now okay. why are you doing the bottom cart and not the top cart? Because it says to do the lower cart, not the, the top cart. Yeah, and the instructions. So we already did the top cart. The instructions. We need to do the bottom cart here, okay? And you'll just keep on going, and you're going to do similar fits for these things, just like what you did for the top cart. Um, so let me finish this one, and I'll get right back. Okay, so we've got this all plotted out. Ah, notice the spacing on this one. Very different than the first one. Spacing is nice, equal distances. So that means we've got a very different graph up here. Notice it's no longer a curve because we have constant velocity. We do not have acceleration on this one like we, we did before. So since we don't have a curve, we don't have to worry about curve fit. We're just going to come straight to linear fit. And there's our linear fit data. And then when we come down here, we've got a nice flat line going straight across. So we could do a linear fit on that. And we basically have a slope of 0. All right, but that this we know we have a slope of zero, so that doesn't really give us the information that we need on that one. What we really need for this one are the statistics. So we click the statistics button, and we can see we've got a minimum, we have a maximum, and we have a mean with the standard deviation. Now that mean, if we look at that, okay, let me get rid of some of this stuff because it also popped up a couple of things there. So 
let's come back to this. If you look at that mean 146, aha, look, it matches your slope there. So we know that this thing is going 146 pixels per second. We know that this down here is going 146 pixels per second too. So those things should match up. That's good. Now come back to this graph and I'm going to highlight, well there's already highlight. We've got these brackets there. I'm going to just click linear fit again and if you look at the slope, the slope is virtually zero, meaning there is no acceleration with this object. On a velocity time graph that slope is acceleration and that slope is zero. So we know we don't have any acceleration. Now, we're going to go through and do some of the other ones in class. Make sure you follow your directions. You're going to be doing some clicking and trying to figure out the, if, if an object is accelerating or not accelerating. Um, and we're going to be looking just basically at constant acceleration. So that's it for now. Um, we will look at this further in class.